Hi everyone. As you're probably aware, we have a great opportunity right now to see quite an interesting comet, uh, a fairly bright comet too. And um, here's an image of it, on obviously on the NASA website. I unfortunately haven't had a, a great clear night yet to be able to um, attempt to image it. This comet was discovered uh, last March when it was out near Jupiter. And the comet name is E3 ZTF. And it's making a, a close approach to Earth right now. I believe on February 1st it's going to be its uh, closest distance from Earth. So I thought it would be a good time to review in SkyTrack how we find and how we track comets. So we're going to go to the uh, Astronomical Objects tab and then the Comets tab. We want to download Comet Orbital Elements. If you already have them downloaded, it's a good idea to refresh that once in a while. So without any filters, we have a, a list of uh, almost a thousand comets. And you can see I have two different ways that you could uh, quickly find that, uh, doing a search by name. And so there it is there. Um, the filter I usually use is uh, the magnitude one to look for um, any bright comets that are available at that time. So if we click on it here, um, I'm connected to the uh, ASCOM simulator for the purpose of a demonstration. And I'm going to click SLU. And so our, our mountain telescope will SLU to the comet. And once this turns green, we know we're pointing at it. So using this method, um, we're tracking at sidereal rate. And that, that may be fine, depending on how fast the comet's moving. It's going to be fine if, if you're just going to, go, going to um, visually view the comet. But if you're doing imaging, again, it might be fine if, if you're not doing too long a subs. Um, if the comet's moving fairly fast, then it's going to be a little um, smeared in your image. The second way we can track is using custom tracking rates. So this is done in SkyTrack using um, data from the JPL Horizons website. And uh, so for the case of comets and asteroids, you can download the JPL data from the comet and asteroid tabs. So using this tab right here, we're going to click that and it quickly downloads a, a file for us that's going to have all the custom tracking rate information that SkyTrack can use. So once we've downloaded that, then we're going to move to the JPL tracking tab. And here's our list of currently downloaded files. So there's our comet. So I can, um, if my mount is capable, um, we'll be able to click this enable custom tracking rates. If your mount isn't capable, then this is going to be grayed out. So you can see now our tracking has changed to uh, custom up here as opposed to sidereal. And so I just clicked uh, slew again. And because this is enabled now, it's going to keep updating the mount with uh, these custom tracking rates here. So you can see in the declination rate, we, we, um, we have some movement in declination. And if we actually watch the coordinates here, you can see the, uh, the declination is slowly increasing. So again, this is, this is fairly slow. It's, it's you know, ticking up at 0.1 of an arc second. So that's going to, again, only make a difference if you're doing a fairly long exposure. So if I'm doing custom tracking rates and then I'm doing a long exposure, our, our comet should be nice and, and sharp and um, we'll see our stars begin to elongate because we're no longer moving at sidereal rate. So those are, are the two different ways either you know tracking the comet at normal sidereal rate or with the custom tracking. Um, with either method, you know, you should be able to get good results, again, depending if you're imaging and how long of a sub you're taking on your image. Uh, so I hope that's helpful, and I wish everyone clear skies, and I'm hoping I, I will get some. 
uh, in the next couple of weeks and if I do maybe I'll, I'll do a video uh, that night of actually tracking and imaging the comet. Uh, bye for now.